Okay, so in this lesson we're going to talk about image preparation and uh, understanding, you know, that an image comes in uh, from the real world with imperfections and all that fun stuff. Um, we're not talking about tracking or anything like that in regards to lens distortion, but there are certain elements that we have to deal with. Uh, digital or film, you're going to get film grain. So if I go ahead and kind of zoom in here, you can see there's a, a noise pattern here. Uh, throughout the image here and that noise pattern uh, is not very uh, prevalent in the green channel but you can see if I go to the, there's the red channel you can see the difference green channel is pretty clean if I hit B for blue you could see that it's just uh, pretty noisy right so the big thing when you're talking about taking something and keying it or taking out the green here and putting a background is to definitely consider a, a degrain so there are a couple of options for this one, of course, is the relatively uh, okay degrain simple here. There are other degrainers that you can find, uh, say, through Nukipedia and so forth. Uh, but the one that they do use in the industry is a neat video. It's pretty much across the entire industry that neat video, a $300 plug-in for Nuke, is the industry standard in regards to degraining for the sole reason that the algorithm actually creates a uh, retains the sharpness of the image. Whenever you grain something, you actually blur it. Neat video is computationally expensive, but in the midst of all of that, you get a sharp image here, which doesn't require any sort of uh, resharpening at the end down the pipeline. Um, you'll eventually probably have to sharpen a little bit up as you start to lose uh, the uh, actual degrading of the image through resampling all the way through the process. But in general, this is $300 that if you are very heavy and intensely uh, using uh, green screen stuff for your projects and so forth, it is the best investment of all the plugins that you would purchase for Nuke. This is the one to do it. Now, in our case, um, I'm just going to go ahead and use the degrain simple, and we'll just show you the kind of artifacts that that introduces. So I'm going to go ahead and take this shot with Sterling here. I'll go ahead and plug that in, and I'll go ahead and just show you. So you have the degrain simple, and you can see that it just basically does an okay job. Um, you can see right here that it's basically using the red, green, and blue channels and the amounts for each. So if you go to R, you can see that we have a... Uh, uh, green here amount and if I just start to pull this up we start to finally clean that image up if I go to the green channel now you could see and you know, I don't have to get too harsh with the green channel because it's pretty clean already so I'll bring it just probably down and I'll go to B for blue and you could start to crank that up to some ridiculous now wh what does this do to your image well let's take a look at sterling here as we kinda uh, hit D to disable this off and on so I'll put my viewer to it you can see sterling is blurred up pretty heavily here through the process. Not too bad because he is a little bit out of focus already, but in general we've gotten rid of the grain to a certain degree. You know, still some color noise there, Skittles color noise I like to call it. But in general, I mean it is what it is. So you can use the degrain simple um, if you prefer. There's also the uh, plug-in for the denoise. So the denoise, I'll go ahead and click that, is another option here. So we can go ahead and throw that in and it's going to ask for a sample here. It's going to give you an error message up here. So I'm going to take the noise and plug that into this image here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and click on the denoise. And again, you're still getting an error message because it says that the clip uh, sampling area is too small. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this, find a uniform area here, and allow it to scan that and do a um, denoise. So you can see, if I take a look at this, I'll go ahead and put my viewer to it. Here's the old, here's the new. Let's see if I can bring this down so you can see this a little bit. I know you guys are watching this with uh, YouTube compression. But there is a, a, a lot of noise taken out, which is essential for when you're doing keying. And this is only on the side of the actual matte side, not the actual D-spill RGB side, uh, but just the alpha that we're going to be pulling. And you can see if I go ahead and take a look really closely, we have had a degradation of image in the sense that it's very, very blurry now. Um, this is uh, somewhat computationally expensive. Usually you want to write this out to a DPX sequence. Uh, just go ahead and write it out, you know, you know, just dot, uh, you know, uh, you can use whatever uh, token you want, but I usually do, do, do three hashtags dot DPX and export this out because you can see as I kind of scrub through it. In this case, I have a pretty fast computer, um, but in generally it, it can be computationally expensive. So usually you export this out and then to make a write node or read node, you just come over here um, under the write node here and you just click on read file. 
so that makes it an actual uh, readable file. So it's basically turning the write node into a read node. So let's talk about cleanup. And when I talk about cleanup, okay, we talk about denoise. So we've denoised the plate here. So I'll just go ahead and give it this write node. And you can come in here and do a lot of things. For instance, you can do a roto paint to take out these tracking marks because Sterling actually crosses over. I use my arrow keys. There's parts in here where he does cross over here. So you can see in this example here, you know, we're getting the tracking down, we're getting this motion blur. So some people would come in here on a per frame basis, put a roto paint node in, and just come to the clone tool. And let's go ahead and just try to clone this out the best we can. So I'll go ahead and again, I'm using a single frame here. And this will be a little bit tricky to pull off. So let's see if I can pull it off with my viewer to it. And you can already see how it's it is what it is. It's not it's not the best reality here. Um, and again, I'm going to show you a little technique to deal with this. So you can see how crazy this can get in the process. Now, someone's going to fly by um, the shot, and if you don't notice it, you'll be okay. But you got to be careful, very careful on this sort of stuff when you're kind of cloning it out, because obviously we got a little bit of blur here. Um, on Sterling kind of coming through here. So there's a whole bunch of ways of kind of cleaning this up. Um, one of the things you can do with your clone tool is set the opacity down pretty low and set the hardness down really low as well. So I can put the hardness to zero and I could put the opacity to say like point, you know, one or something like that. And then I could just start to kind of blend this in as best I can. And it's got to be consistent, so if I go ahead and hit D and disable, you can see it's it's okay. I mean, would somebody notice if it flew by? For instance, if I just go ahead and take a look, like here we got this, and then we go here. Um, as long as there's no crawling around, along the edges, and uh, one frames, uh, you know, if there's more than one frame, then you got an issue there. So you got to be very careful with that kind of stuff. So any time when Sterling actually crosses over um, here is going to be an issue to take care of. So same, same thing again, I'm going to have to kind of grab from here and you can do this after your key as well I'm going to show you guys the process of doing that which I learned from a good friend of mine Brad who uh, is since then working on major motion pictures um, in the industry so he's a he taught me a ton and I'm very grateful for him so a lot of the techniques I'm going to be teaching you guys this course were actually taught by uh, people that are in the industry that are big shots that flew out to the island of Chicago for a day or whatever, not a day I should say, but for about two two months and worked with me on some commercials. And uh, they taught me a ton of amazing stuff. I mean, I thought I knew compositing until I met these guys. And, you know, it's it's kind of intimidating when you're talking to somebody who just walked off the set of, you know, or walked off compositing on, you know, Star Wars Episode uh, 7. And since then I've, I've worked on uh, even bigger films. Um so just learning from those guys has been incredible. So again, you can see how painstaking this is, and I'm just sampling the local color here, um, as you can see. And I can also come in here and paint a specific piece here and set a range. So for instance, Sterling disappears right here and come right here. I can do a clone here for this, and this is set to a single. But I can also set this to a range and set this from current frame, which is frame 40, all the way to frame 93. So any actual paintbrush stroke that I put in here, that's what it's going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just do my best to sample the local area here like that. And now you can see as I scrub forward, it basically goes away. So that's a lot of work when you think about it. And some of these, you know, usually have a darker color of green as a tracking dot for the sake of 3D tracking and so forth. And that's, you know, it, it usually will go into the key, but it, it'll create artifacts that swim along the edges of your actual scene. So we're going to be taking care of those with uh, another crazy technique. But before we even do that, um, I want to go ahead and just uh, talk a little bit about the balancing of the actual green screen here. So commonly you can do all type of techniques using gradients, if you wish, um, whatever you prefer to actually set up uh, and balance out the screen. You can see if I bring uh, slam the gamma down here, you can see very clearly that we have two different shades of green here. We've got a darker area where we didn't have any actual light covering this area of the green screen. I did this purposely so that you guys are dealing with the worst case scenarios. And uh, you can see just by looking at it, it's like, wow, this is a very uh, heavy difference in chrominance. 
And if you get too dark, then you're basically dealing with black pixels, which don't key at all. And if you get too bright, you're basically dealing with white pixels, which won't key at all if you're trying to uh, key green. So you got to be careful on whether or not your uh, actual color green is too close to 1 or cl too close to value 0, because that's going to actually give you all types of trouble. Okay, so with that said, I'm going to talk a little bit about this sucker here. This is a, a PNF uh, screen clean. Um, I believe it's by Pixel uh, Fudger, I think they're called. I'm not sure the name of it. It's basically if you go to Nukipedia, you can install it, but uh, this is independent by itself um, and should load up fine. Uh, but it's the uh, screen cleaner, and this is pretty cool. So if I take my plate shot and plug it in here and just put my viewer to it, and then, wow, you can see a huge difference. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit D to disable this, and you can see I can actually just come over here to my screen color and click and choose a color that's not too bright from the original and not too dark from the original. So I'll choose a, a screen color of somewhere in the middle here. I don't, you know, like that. So now I'm going to re-enable this. And now you can see it's kind of taken that and kind of, it just basically balanced it all out. But keep in mind, anything you do in compositing, you start me uh, messing with the image, you are uh, going to be giving yourself some headaches because you could be creating artifacts along the edges of the character you could be losing detail like for instance in the hair here could be kind of depleting anytime you do any digital manipulation to something you get you tamper with it you, um, or I like to call tamper in God's domain um, you will definitely find that you're you're, you're doing something in the image that you might lose the original um, image and we don't want to lose anything like these motion blur areas um, and anything like that. So this did balance it out a little bit. If I bring the contrast down, still still a bit of a difference there, but you can see if I kind of turn this off and on, there is a little bit more consistency through it. So again, this is a nifty tool we'll be using throughout our tutorials as a screen clean. We're going to be using a lot of plugins that you get through Nukipedia for free um, and just kind of uh, go through that. So it also has a, a mask and also a clean plate information here as well. So let me talk about one other way to do uh, cleanup, say, for tracking dots and so forth. So we have our denoise. I'm going to get rid of this roto paint for now. And let's move my screen clean over here really quick. And I'll just move some of this stuff out of the way here. Got some of these shots. I just want to stick with Sterling here. And if I take the denoise and I go, I'm going to first create a roto. And the roto doesn't have to be attached to anything. It can be off to the side here. And I'm going to find all of these obnoxious tracking dots uh, that I don't like. So, for instance, I'm going to go ahead and roto around this. I'm going to get as tight as possible on this, by the way. So get as close as you can, but not too close. Like that, you could literally draw it if you wanted to. You can draw it around. And then I can come over here. I'm just going to grab around this guy like that. Who else has got a troublesome spot here. Oh, there we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this guy right here. And again, I want to get as close as I can to these things. I purposely made this green screen an absolute mess, by the way. So I'm just going to go ahead and jump over here. And how about some other troublesome areas? Maybe this, this little guy over here is, could be a troublesome little piece. This is actual background, so I'm not going to deal with it. Um, I could go ahead and just shoot for these pieces here. There we go. And let's go ahead and shoot for this. What the heck? Let's shoot with this guy. See what we get. There we go. So I basically rotoed or created an alpha for all of our troublesome little uh, dot areas here throughout our shot. And we're going to go ahead and use a technique that actually uses a unpremalt premalt edge blur to sort of uh, shrink in or sample the outer areas and kind of suck them in like a black hole and then kind of blend this thing out. It's a pretty neat trick. So um, the next step we're going to do here is we're going to take this and invert it. So we're going to take this uh, alpha image. You can see if I kind of look at it, it's outputting alpha information. And we invert this. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. There we go. So we got an invert, and we're basically the opaque areas are what we're going to be affecting. In this case, will be this white area here. So if we kind of take a look at throughout our thing. Let me hit S for settings, by the way. Uh, my full size format should be set to my 4000 by 2160. It's off the screen, but you want to make sure that's 4000 by 2160. Otherwise, you're going to have errors. And also, by the way, um, I just want to mention your project settings. 
Uh, my current folder is in my D drive, but you would go ahead and just click here and p basically put this to uh, the folder from which you downloaded off of my website so that all of these, uh, it's basically uh, basing the uh, referencing via the, where the nuke script is. So it's really cool that way when you load these files up, you know, you're not getting errors and having to repath this by clicking here. So um, you should, uh, in theory, uh, not have any problem. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and make a merge node now. And we're gonna go ahead and put that right here. And I'm gonna plug this B into the original image and A into this. And I'm gonna set this operation to mask. So we're gonna take a look at it. So you can see, uh, if we take a look at the image, here's the original. Here's this now, right? So it's creating a mask. And now I'm gonna add an edge blur right here, which obviously is going to blur the actual alpha edge. And I'm going to really crank this up to say, oh, let's try 22 for now. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and unpremult this. I'm going to go unpremult and click on this. And you'll notice nothing is happening. And that's because if we look at our original footage, and poke around here, um, we don't have an alpha image. If I hit A for alpha, you can see this image comes in uh, this actual DNG image has no alpha in it, so we actually have to come in here and turn on auto alpha so it inherently creates an alpha image. So then when we get to the merge node, you can see we do have an alpha channel now that the overlay is correct. So now I want to go to the edge blur, it's blurring the edge, and then when I come to the unpremalt, voila, it has cleaned up a lot of the edge work here, as you can see. Pretty amazing. Now you don't have to have the denoise um, actually uh, at the uh, you can, usually people take care of this beforehand. So for instance, I'll go ahead and plug this guy in. And then at this point, then you would add your denoise. This is just cleanup work. So I'll go ahead and put this source noise and we would come here and we'd be good to go. You can see it's looking really, really nice. Now, again, it didn't solve everything on the overlap. So if we come over here and watch Sterling go back uh, uh, throughout the process here, that didn't take us long at all to do, by the way. But we have to be aware that there is a, there's obviously going to be an issue here when we have overlap. So if I go ahead and poke around, and again, I can just hit A for alpha here and kind of see where this is, hap this is happening here. So you can see we're going to have all types of weirds. See if I can find a frame here. Actually, let's just go back to the original footage. There we go. Okay, so we, we currently have, you know, this scene here. Let's go ahead and see how the, uh, it resolved the, the detail. It didn't do too bad, actually. What it's doing is basically taking the information from above here and here and kind of uh, sucking it in. So you can see it's done a pretty amazing job. Let's go ahead and take a look at other problem areas. So let's go ahead and find a frame where his hair is maybe overlapping here. There we go. So just poke ahead. There we go. So we got that. Let's see how that resolved it. Okay, it did a decent job. You can see we got this sort of wisp here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is add a roto paint to just do some slight work on here. Uh, less work than I would have done before. So let me go ahead and put the dot node here by hitting dot, period. And now I can go ahead and take this roto node and just do some slight per frame based uh, clone work. So again, I'll make this big. I'll put my uh, hardness down to zero. And let's see if we can kind of clean this up. Again, I'll put my opacity down to something, maybe like 0.1 or something. And see if we can kind of clean this up just briefly. See, I didn't have to do a lot of work. But it's enough that the audience is not going to notice if I go ahead and play this through, right? They're going to they're gonna just assume it is. And it's the chatter or uh, sort of like uh, moving edges around the corners here. There's, a, there's an old cartoon called Dr. Katz. You should look it up on YouTube, uh, K-A-T-Z, and you'll see how if you see chattering along the edges, it's a failed key. It's also failed paintwork as well. So that's it in regards to cleanup. We got, we got plenty of other stuff we're going to do in regards to quote-unquote cleanup and making our plates look good. In fact, one last technique I want to show you guys is actually we're going to get involved with a little bit of the keying already. And we're going to talk about the most uh, popular keyers, IPK Gizmo Color and also Key Light. But this is a little process I'm going to show you guys that actually cleans up even further. 
So I'm going to, I've uh, got my denoise now. I'm going to definitely have to do this after my denoise. I'm going to use keying to, uh, you know, kind of a rough key to basically clean this up even more. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this in. And the IBK color, if I go ahead and click on it, you can see if I just go ahead and try to uh, build this up. We're going to talk about this key here a little bit, but basically it actually tries to create a uh, clean plate from the backing region. It's doing the same thing kind of what we're dealing with over here in regards to sampling localized areas. But again, I'm just going to come over here. Currently I have a size to 16. And let's see if I can kind of basically gobble up as much of those outlines of our character. I have this set to green. And the IBK color, as you can see, if I take a look at the original versus this, you can see what it's done. It's sampling uh, this area, and it's basically as if uh, Sterling got out of the way, out of the actual shot. Okay. Um, if I go to the gizmo, so you plug in the color here to the gizmo, IBK gizmo. Again, you can get these by typing IBK gizmo or color. And then you plug in the foreground here you can see we get a key, right? That's all we're really doing here is pulling a key. So if I hit A for alpha, we have a key. Um, again, pretty rough on the edges over here. Next, I shuffle out the alpha channel. So if I go ahead and take a look here, um, now if I look at RGB, you can see that we've flooded the alpha channel to the alpha. Now I've inverted the image, uh, which basically inverts the outside. And now I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I create a constant. You can just type in constant right here. And I'll just double click on that. I'm going to put my viewer to the denoise node. And I'm going to click on an area here that, you know, just is generally the green screen area, right? So what's going on here is it's going to be taking the uh, background plate or the clean plate created from the IBK color. And it's going to minus from that. And what you see here is the difference data between this uh, flat you know, constant image and this image here. Okay. So here you can see the difference. And now if I do, if, if I take that difference and here is the actual file itself, you know, I've inverted the mat, I can multiply that on top. So B for background, A for top, and then I plus it. Now we can see if I put this viewer to this plus sign and go back to my denoise, look at the change that we have created here. Um, pretty amazing, right? There's a huge difference. Have we lost detail? Yes, we have lost detail in this process. You can see right here we've lost some motion blur artifacts. We also have maybe have introduced a little bit of a line here. Um, what else can we say here? So you can see all this kind of half transparency stuff has kind of disappeared. We still have some motion blur. Uh, you can see here we've lost a little bit of detail in here. It's sort of like flooded out. It almost seems like this area has just been kind of flooded uh, with a green. It's it's kind of eating away at some of the juicy motion blur. And the motion blur, the depth of field, the wispy hairs, all that stuff is the important stuff that we have to hold on to. But this makes for one heck of a key. Let's look at the difference between the original, right, and the finish. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. You guys see a world of difference there? So this is this can be good for running gun situations. Obviously, we have to mask this area out, and this is a little bit of problem area. But we've cleaned up a majority of these issues. We still have to do some paint work on the intersections where uh, Sterling actually walks in front of the, uh, these little points. But in general, we've done some work. Now, again, manipulation is dangerous because this manipulation starts to affect your edge. But these are just some common ways to clean up your plates uh, for keying. So just be aware of that.